بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين There's combat position positions and non-combatant positions. Not everyone is pulling the trigger. Not everyone is in a plane dropping bombs on the heads of the Muslims. They have other jobs. They have criminal investigators. They have divers. They need technicians. They need engineers. They have therapists. They have uh, intelligence people. They have computer programmers. It's not permissible to join even in those positions under the umbrella of a Kafir military hostile to, Mus to Muslims. All those positions are in direct support of an institution hostile and at war with Islam and Muslims. And before they got into that position, they entered the gates of Rigda with their oath. The soldier can't pull the trigger nor drop a missile without the direct support of those other positions. Those other so-called non-combatant positions. You know how many non-combatant positions are needed to send off a drone to kill the children of Yemen? With technology and the way the wars are run today, those not, some of those non-combatant positions are more essential, more harmful than the trigger man. The military doesn't create positions for fun and leisure or because they have a big budget to donate salaries. فَإِن كَانَ مُحَارِبًا لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ مُعِينًا لِلْكُفَّارِ بِخِدْمَةٍ أَوْ كِتَابَةٍ فَهُوَ كَافِرٍ Ibn Hazm's fatwa. Even if he merely writes for them in support of what they do against the Muslim, then he's a kafir. Aw kitab, just a mere writer for them, or writing for them. Ibn Taymiyyah said, if one sharpens the pencil or washes the clothes of an oppressor, he's among those who aid the oppressor. In Idah, Turuq al Istiqama, which is a book. Uh, written by the uh, same author that wrote the fiqh book that we've been learning from. He mentioned or he narrated that a man asked Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said to Imam Ahmad, am I considered among those who aid the oppressors? Imam Ahmad said, what's your position? He said, khayyatuhum. I'm a tailor for them. He said, you're not assisting the oppressor. You're the oppressor. You're the direct oppressor. You're the oppressor himself. Other ulama mentioned the same identical question, the same answer, but attributed the story to Sufyan al Thawri or Ibn al Mubarak. Being a tailor, sewing and stitching their clothes is a direct oppressor, direct participant. They said, the level under that who aids them is the level under that. Who is he? The one who sells them the strings and the needles. In Sayyid al-Khatir, that's written by Ibn al-Jawzi, when Imam Ahmad was in prison, he mentioned that when Imam Ahmad was in prison, a guard asked him, am I among those who aid and assist oppressors? He doesn't make decisions. He opens the gates and he closes them. He cleans the prison. He brings the food for the inmates. Imam Ahmed said, no, you're not among those who aid the oppressors. You're directly involved. You're the oppressor. He said, Imam Ahmed said, whoever aids you, you, then he is among those who assists and aids the oppressors. Al-Asbahani mentioned that and he said, Imam Ahmed said to the guard, the ones who aid and assist the oppressors is the one, he's the guard. He said, the one who cuts your hair and washes your clothes and cooks your meal and buys and trades and deals with you. You, you are a direct oppressor. 
the jobs in the military are direct participants in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Fir'aun they're like the jobs that the military of Fir'aun took on he said about the military of Fir'aun inna Fir'auna wa Hamana wa junoodahuma kanu khati'in Fir'aun there was the Fir'aun of the old times and there's the Fir'auns of today if the Fir'auns of today didn't explicitly say what the Fir'aun of the past said, ma urikum illa ma ara, or ana rabbukum al a'la, their actions in missiles and drones spoke it. Fir'aun of the past was a Fir'aun of Egypt. The Fir'auns of today are global Fir'auns. For Afghanistan, Yemen, Somal, Iraq, Syria, Palestine, elsewhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not exempt the soldiers of Fir'aun. They're direct participants. Inna Fir'auna wa Hamana wa junoodahuma kanu khati'in. Fir'aun, Haman, the leaders. Wa junoodahuma. And their troops, their hosts, they're all wrongdoers and sinners. He put them in the same hukum. Wastakbara huwa wa junooduh. Fir'aun became arrogant. Alone? By himself and his troops, they were arrogant without a right. وَنُرِيَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَهَامَانَ وَجُنُودَهُمَا مِنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَحْذَرُونَ Again, Fir'aun and Haman, the leaders. That's all, the leaders alone. وَجُنُودَهُمَا The direct participants, the troops. If it wasn't for Fir'aun's military, what could Fir'aun have done? Tyrants and Tawaghi and those kuffar who are hostile against Muslims, they couldn't do nothing without their troops. So someone would say, it's the leaders doing it, but it's not the troops. We, we feel bad for them. Evil torment will encompass Al Fir'aun. Al Fir'aun. Al usually means the family of. Al Hassan is the family of Hassan. His name is Al Hassan. It's the family of Al Hassan. Of Hassan. This is not the family of Fir'aun. Al here is referring to his troops and followers. Because his wife was the woman I just mentioned recently in the talk about the sisters in prison, the believer. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to follow our example. 